Auto Hotkey version two. Why am I talking about it? What is it? Well, I'll answer that right now. You know how when you have a program open, in my case, there's Blender, every single program has these hotkeys. So if I hit A, that selects all, X is for the lead, Control S saves the file. I even have F3 that lets me do hotkeys for hotkeys. This is a principle that exists in every program. So in WordPad, I have some text. I can select some of it, Control B to make it bold. I could take some more of this, Control I to make it metallic. I think you get the point. What Auto Hotkey does is it makes it all in one environment. You can make hot keys that do anything on your computer. It can hop between softwares. You could literally run programs or something as simple as replacing text. And as long as you're running Windows, you can download it as well. So autohotkey.com, it's going to ask you, do you want version 2 or version 1? Everybody's transitioning to version 2. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Now, the way that we use autohotkey is we make scripts. What does that mean? Well, basically, when you open the dash, you're going to have all of these different options. Don't worry about any of them except for this new script. This is going to make what is essentially a text file. So I'm going to call this tutorial script. Pick a path and then also I'm going to make it for version 2. Not always necessary, but I'm doing v2 code. So let's create that. What you're going to see is immediately creates this auto hotkey file. You can tell because there's an H and to run the script, literally all I need to do is double click it. Of course, it didn't do anything because the script is empty, but that is how you launch it. Let's put something in our script. So right click, you can edit your script with literally whatever you want. Let's do it in notepad and I can just write a bit of code. I'll explain how to do this later. So I'm going to make a message box that says hello. I'm going to save this and then close notepad. And now when I launch the script, it, you know, does the instructions. It outputs hello in this case. And very quickly, you can see how you iterate, right? You open Notepad again, and you can say hello there, beautiful people. You edit, you save, you close, and then you run the script again. So instead of a message box, let's use a command called run. What am I going to run? Well, I'm going to run, I don't know, Chrome or something like that. And now when I double click this, you can see it opens Chrome. So this can be stupid simple. So you run Chrome, and then let's say you run WordPad, save, and then launch it, and it will open uh, two programs at once. And after both of these have been executed, I can again do a message box that says something like done. It opened both of these and then it did create this uh, message box in background. So now let's get a bit more complicated. Instead of Notepad, what I like to use is VS Code, which some of you might be familiar with. It's just a very, very fancy text editor that people use for coding. So I'm just going to drag this in. And here you can see our text file. There's this nice coloring that's going to be super useful. And if you don't have this and it doesn't like auto hotkey in your extensions, just look for auto hotkey plus plus and install that. And this is going to give you a lot of nice stuff where, for example, if I type in like win activate, it can finish what I'm typing for me and then also give me recommendations for what parameters it takes, etc. So let's start off with what is essentially a blank file. It is going to start with requires auto hotkey v2 because the code I type might be version 2. If you don't have this, you know, put it in requires auto hotkey v2. So as you saw, kind of the most basic command is you can have a message box. I could do message box 2. When I run that, it's going to output a 2 in this window. I can also do 2 plus 2, which is going to be 4. I wonder if it does sign. I'm not sure. Let's throw a sign in there. Okay, apparently it does sign. So you could do all kinds of math here. Additionally, like I showed, you could put in a string. The way you do a string or a piece of text is you have your quotation marks. So here, uh, I turn sign uh, four times three into a piece of text. And this is a good illustration because now when I run it, you can see it literally has that text. Whereas if I got rid of this, it's a mathematical expression. So whatever is in your quotation marks, you can consider as basically a piece of text. And then to add strings together in the same way we add numbers, you do something called concatenation. You have one string, do a space, and then you just put another. So hello, Mr. CG Matter. And this is kind of like the addition of strings. So if I run this now, you see we have hello, Mr. CG Matter. There's not a space between hello and Mr., which makes sense because it ended on this O, and then it immediately went to this M. There is no space in between if you don't define it. So I could either put a space in the beginning here, and when I run it, there's now spacing. Or even simpler, maybe more intuitive, is I put a string in the middle that is just kind of like this empty string. So we have hello, just this white space, spacebar thing, and then Mr. CG Matter. So let's make a variable called output. You can see it's a blue by default, so that is a variable. And the way you define it is it's not like... Uh, most programming languages where you have the equal, but it's actually colon equal, which is similar to some math notation, I think, but you're saying output is defined as, let's say, the string testing. And then instead of like putting testing over here the way we did, I can literally pass the variable output. So there you go. You can also do math with um, different variables. And by math, I mean con concatenation. So let's see, this one could be and again. And the way I want to output this is I'm going to have an output, then I'm just going to have a space, and then I'm going to have output two, and it should, let's see, it will do test 
testing space. And again, by the way, it does auto conversion of variables most of the time. It depends on the context and stuff like that. But for example, if my output was the string, not the number, but the string two, and then for the message box, I did three plus the output. Here we're taking a number and adding a string, but you can see it knows to convert that into a number and give five. So it's very contextual, but we don't just need to send like message boxes. We can do more. So as I showed, we can use this run command followed by a string. We now know this is a string. I could type something like Chrome in here. It will open Chrome, but once it opens Chrome, what if I want to type some stuff? So you see, we have this uh, search bar over here. Well, effectively what I need to do is type things and auto hotkey is very, very good at that. It can mimic your keyboard and your mouse. So our second instruction is to type something and you do that with another very basic word. It is send. So what are we sending? Well, it's whatever is in these parentheses and it is going to be the text that says, well, not Facebook. Let's do twitter.com. Note that this might be too fast. Like one happens immediately after another. So let's try it. I'm going to run Chrome. Okay. didn't have enough time to uh, type it in. However, if you look back over here, you see, oh, we have twitter.com. I didn't write that. That was actually the send command. So it was so fast that it typed it before Chrome even opened. Uh, to wait or to sleep is the actual word between commands. You literally type in sleep. If I do my parentheses, which again is where we pass parameters here, you have an integer, the amount of time in milliseconds. So if I do a sleep by one, that is not one second, but one millisecond. So if I want to wait two seconds, it would be 2000. And this should give us enough time to type in Twitter. So it opens Chrome, waits two seconds, and then it types in twitter.com. Of course, it doesn't go here because the next step would be to hit enter. So you want to think about what are the processes I'm doing. After we send Twitter, we could then send, I don't even think we need to sleep because we're still in that text box, uh, but I could send not the text enter. So you're going to be tempted to do something like this. It's going to do twitter.com and then literally type in the word enter. You want kind of the key on the keyboard enter. So there's special keys like spacebar, enter, backspace, tab uh, for those so that you know we're talking about the button and not the text. You kind of put that in brackets. And again, not all of this you have to memorize. So if I was to just type this in raw, I could start typing in enter and it would already know to put in those brackets. So we're going to open Chrome. We're going to go to twitter.com and then hit enter. So already we have a program that can go to any website uh, super quickly. But really what we did is we opened a program like Chrome and then sent keystrokes and that can be for anything. So let's say we want to run Blender, for example. What you're going to be tempted to do is you might want to say like run Blender. Well, when you run this, you're going to see it doesn't know what Blender is. Of course, that makes sense because if I go to Blender, I have 3.6, 4, 4.2, 4.3. It's basically the same as command prompt, right? If I was to go to CMD and type in Blender, it doesn't know what I'm talking about. But Notepad is kind of a default Microsoft thing, so it knows what Notepad is. How do we get around this? Well, we need to tell it what Blender is. Specifically, Blender 4.3, I can right-click it and go to the file. In this case, it's just going to be a shortcut, but it's just as good. You can see that this basically encapsulates this path or piece of text, which when I hit enter and a command prompt will now open Blender. Very similarly, if I copy that text as a path, I could replace Blender and it will work as if it was in command prompt. So I'm going to run this now and that also opened Blender. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, the place online to learn both practical and creative skills. And yes, there's a bunch of things on there, but I see it as a treasure trove of tutorials about very specific things. So of course you have your videography, you have your photography, you have even your 3D animation. I've talked about Blender. But as you can see from this video, my recent focus really has been Auto Hotkey. And it turns out there are a few Auto Hotkey classes, one of which is made by Joe Glines. I know him as the automator. He's been around. Actually, some of the stuff I learned about Auto Hotkey is from this guy. And this is like a true segmented like beginner's course. Assuming you don't know programming, like I assumed a little you knew what I was talking about. I think I did a pretty good job at this guy's much more extensive. I have seen a lot of the um, tutorials this guy has made, so I recommend Intro to Auto Hotkey, Learn to Automate Your Windows Computer. Maybe one day we will have Mac, but that day is not today. So check out that class or honestly anything you're interested about. But first, use this link in the description. The first 500 people to click and do so will get a one month free trial of Skillshare expenses paid for, covered. Okay, let's go back to some auto hotkey. Now, what do I want to do once I'm in Blender? I can hit enter to get rid of the splash screen. I can hit A, for example, to select everything and then X to delete, making sure to hit enter. So let's open a Blender scene, get rid of the splash screen and then immediately make it an empty scene. I know you can do a default scene, but that is the goal here. So we can literally break this down into steps. By the way, a good way to organize is if you do a semicolon, you get green and green indicates that it's a comment. It doesn't actually get interpreted. So for example, I could say something like open Blender. 
So I know that that's what this command does. The next thing is I need to wait for Blender to open. So I'm going to sleep for 2000 milliseconds. And then what do I want to do? Well, I want to select everything, hit X and uh, delete. So the same way that we could send text like twitter.com, we can also send just the letter A, which Blender understands means select everything. I guess also we do need to have it send the enter key to get rid of the uh, splash screen. So we'll do both of those at once. And then I want it to wait a little bit. So I can then wait a thousand milliseconds or one second, and then it's going to select A. So this will get rid of the splash screen. This will select all. So it opens Blender, it gets rid of the splash screen, and then it selects everything. And then the rest is super easy, right? We hit X for delete, enter. So you just want to look at what it is you're doing and mimic that over here. I'm just going to copy what we did here, but replace A with X for delete. And then we need the enter key to confirm. By the way, you don't always need to have giant gaps. Like if it's just two keys that work very well consecutively really quickly, uh, you can have this be as low as also like 200 millis or sorry, 20 milliseconds. Okay, so let's run this. We open a instance of Blender. It will get rid of the splash screen and then get rid of everything. Amazing. Now, what if, let's go a step higher. What if we already had Blender open, but I don't want to like run the script and then like transition over to Blender. Well, this is where a hotkey comes in. In the same way where I could do something like Control S in Notepad, and that is the hotkey Control S, we can also make a hotkey in Auto Hotkey. So let's just start with a simple conversion. Let's say I want the hotkey like Control Shift 5. I'm doing that one because I know it's not taken. I do Control Shift 5 on the keyboard and nothing happens. Well, the first problem is we don't really know how to express that. Like, do we do Control plus Shift plus 5? Uh, the answer is no. And there are special keys like the Control key, the Shift key, the Alt key. They do have a equivalent way to type them. So Control is this caret, Shift is plus, and Alt is exclamation point. They seem random, but once you remember these three, you're golden. So with this, what is Control Shift 5? Well, this is Control. Shift 5. And this is the brevity, the fast way of um, writing Control Shift 5. What we want to say is when we do Control Shift 5, do all of this. The way we define it is we say use a colon twice. You see the exact moment we do that, this text turns blue, a dark blue. That means it's a hotkey or kind of a, a command in some sense. We need to put our command inside of brackets. So because we have a big block of text, I'm going to put one bracket here. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom and put another bracket. And this is read as when I do Control Shift 5, do all of this. So I I run and this time nothing happens right it doesn't open blender which makes sense because we haven't triggered it i can actually minimize this and be on my desktop and now when i hit Control shift 5 it remembers that hotkey and it automatically does all of those things and in a single you know script in a single text file you can do as many hotkeys as you want so let's do a Control shift 6 is obviously not taken as well i don't know it could maybe just like send some text so i'm gonna put my brackets over here and it could send the text hello and that's whenever i do Control shift 6 so this is like a shorthand for it so i'm gonna refresh the script. And now when I do control shift six, it will type this for me. This is very useful if it is a big piece of text. Hello there. My name is Ishmael and I am male ish. And whenever I type in control shift six, it will give all of that for me. Now, this is kind of a weird way to work where let's say I have a, a piece of text over here. Do I really want to remember control shift six? Like, you know, you have the same issue where you have so many hotkeys, you don't know what's going on. Well, auto hotkey also has something called hot strings, which I want to introduce now. So to do a hot string, you don't just do two colons, but you do four and then you give it a name. So let's say I have Ishmael. The way you want to interpret this is it's looking for when I'm typing in Ishmael and it is case sensitive. So I'm going to have to have that capital I and I'm just going to copy the same command just like before. So now if I do control shift six or if I type in Ishmael, it will perform the same command. I'm now just, you know, in my text editor typing whatever. And then all of a sudden I'm like, again, capital I Ishmael. You have to hit space, enter or tab after you do that, it will just start typing stuff. So this is great if you're writing emails and you have something you're saying all the time or whatever. But in the context of Blender, even like some things you need to know the names for to run the command. So for example, if I have a cube right here and I want to make it a rigid body, I have to hit F3 to open this menu and then I have to type in rigid body. I don't know if there's a hotkey for this, but let's assume there isn't. How do I turn that into a hotkey, a make rigid body hotkey? I'm going to define another hot string. So really, we're just making a dictionary of commands here. I'm going to call it, what do I want to call it? RBD for rigid body dynamics. And when I do RBD, I don't actually explicitly need to say send this piece of text because there is a uh, fast way to do this. So I can say add rigid body. This is the equivalent of saying send that piece of text. So let's do a reload. And now when I go to F3, if I'm feeling lazy, I could just go RBD space and it will go to add rigid body. Now the part that's missing is it also needs to hit enter, but we can do commands and, you know, hitting enter all at once. So let's just put all of this in brackets now that I want this as a nice little function. I think 
think the easier way to do this is I say add rigid body and then I'm going to have it sleep for just like a bit like a fifth of a second and then it's going to send again we know that we can send enter as long as it has these brackets and now when I type in rbd in space it automatically applies it so it typed it and then it hit enter and that's just like a passive way to do that so what if instead of a rigid body I wanted is there like passive yeah add passive well in that case I can just kind of make a variant of this so instead of a rbd it's pbd passive body dynamic I don't know but it will instead type add passive and then keep the rest of the logic so let's actually make a super fast scene I'm going to make a plane over here this should be a passive and then let's make a cube on top of it slightly rotated and this should be a active and then boom so you can see how fast you can work here not the best example because Blender has Python integration but the beauty is I could do this and then I can go to a different program fetch some information bring it back so in fact after we do PBD let's just look up the Wikipedia definition for that so I'm going to run Chrome and that will already let me type in what I want to find so I'm going to send in other words I'm going to type or emulate on my keyboard what is a passive rigid body Wikipedia and then once I've typed in my query we of course need to hit the glorious enter key making sure to add a bit of a buffer between when Chrome opens and when it types in the thing so what we expect is this will add a passive rigid body and then for some reason it will look up what it does in Chrome okay so let's add in this cube as this strange collider and then with F3 I'm going to type in PVD it's going to make it a passive rigid body and then it's going to look up what that means for some reason on Wikipedia now if I wanted to go to one of these websites it's not obvious how to automate that because it could change every time what uh, shows up but uh, we can have it make a guess so notice that when I hit tab on the keyboard it's going to select different things as I hit tab more and more and more it will kind of like go all the way down here so let's take a guess we're going to hit tab 15 times and then it can like hit enter to go to the website well in that case it's going to look up this uh, search query I say it's so weird so fluid like search query but I mean a search query whatever okay so after it looks that up I'm going to have it wait for a full second to get results and then instead of you know hitting tab every single time which by the way you would do by sending again in these uh, brackets tab but not in capitals instead of taking this and copying it like 15 times or whatever like in all programming languages there's a concept of a loop and an auto hotkey incredibly easy to write so I'm going to say loop for 15 times so whatever I'm about to say do it 15 times that thing is going to be defined in these brackets and it's that hit tab thing so I'm going to throw this in here so after it types this into Chrome it will then hit tab 15 times and when it's done with that feel free to hit enter might be a good idea to just add the tiniest bit of sleep like 30 uh, milliseconds I'm getting really annoyed by hitting this reload every time let's just make a, a shorthand for that so let's make a hot string this is going to be called reload so whenever I type in reload it's going to execute the command of reload this is something that's actually already defined in auto hotkey that's why it exists so I only have to reload one more time so that now it's defined and then from then on whenever I type in reload anywhere it will have reloaded our script okay let's try this weird thing pbd it will make it a passive it will go to chrome it will type in the query it's going to hit tab many times and clearly I didn't give it enough time to think about that no big deal let's give it two seconds to actually find some results I wonder what a hundred tabs would look like and because we're doing so many I'm going to bring down the sleep now I know this is supposed to be in the context of blender but I could just write it anywhere so I'm going to reload the script I'm going to type pbd and it's going to do the same thing but outside of the context of blender so it's hitting tab it's going somewhere a little Russian roulette and I guess that's where it went Okay, so what, what I'm trying to say is you can hop in between programs and do all of these like weird things. And before I fully lose my voice, I want to talk about one more quick concept, which you might be thinking, okay, we have all these commands, these hotkeys. What about this fucker? How do we use the mouse? Well, good question. Just like there is the send command, there is a very simple command for mouse and that is the click command we say do we left or right click and where you could also do something like a mouse move so that you can move the mouse and then click it but whatever when you download auto hotkey remember we made a script over here when we began there's also some other stuff a weird one by the way called window spy like this incognito kind of image over here when you hit it it's not as creepy as it sounds it actually just gives you information about your screen where is my mouse what program do i've opened so if i open this now you can see i have explore.exe but when i hover over this i'm in uh, vs code so let's Say I want to end this tutorial on a bang. I want to go to file and I want to go to exit so that we close VS Code and that's it. Well, I need to know where to click. If I hover over file, you can see the screen coordinates, which is the coordinate of where it is on your screen instead of saying, oh, where is it relative to the window? But to make it simple, let's start with screen coordinates. Uh, when I'm at file, it's roughly 50 by 20. So when we do a click, I need to pass parameters. So I'm doing that uh, parentheses thing and we can actually read our options. So the first thing is it's asking what button. It will default to left click, but you could do left or right or middle mouse. And I guess 
guess also mouse four and mouse five and all of these other things. But then we also set a X and a Y coordinate. So again, it was 50 by 20 ish. So I'm going to pass a string that says L for left. I'm then going to put an X coordinate of 50 and a Y coordinate of 20. By the way, as you might expect, X increases as we go here, but Y is actually zero at the top and it increases as you go down. Probably the inverse of what you're used to. But okay, so we have a command to click at 50, 20, and it's going to be a left click and it didn't do anything. Well, maybe it needs some time to think. So let's just add a very minor sleep of 100 milliseconds. Okay, reload. What do we got? Okay, so it hit file. Great. We go to file and then we want to click exit, which has a coordinate of roughly 100 by 650, it looks like. I can copy this right here. We're going to the coordinates 100 by 650. I'm going to add a sleep because it takes more than a millisecond to like open this, of course. And I don't think we actually need this top one. Let's do a reload and it goes to file and then it uh, goes to exit, but it doesn't actually click it. Maybe that's because it didn't have enough time to do that. So let's go to 300 milliseconds and end this bad boy for real. So reload, file, exit. Boom. There you go. Again, I'm using this mostly not to optimize or automate my Blender workflow, but to make these YouTube videos. Actually, let, let me just show you one more thing. So I have a script called Automate. It does a lot of things. But one thing I can do is I can type in AAMP3. That's just my shortcut for it anywhere I want. And then if I click a video, like the first attempt at me recording this tutorial, it will automatically open FFmpeg and convert that into an MP3 file. Okay, so that is now it. So check out cgmatter.com if you want to learn more about this or Blender or whatever. Uh, go to Patreon for the same thing. And and uh, yeah, goodbye, boys.